Welcome back to Full On Football, where, of course, we have the triple trouble tonight, I call it, and that, of course, is our three defenders, our three brothers, Michael Menekeller from Campbelltown City, Daniel Menekeller from Metro Stars, and David Menekeller also from Metro Stars. Now, boys, look, I've got my shin pads on because I don't know what was going to be happening down here underneath the table, but... Um, I wanted to ask you each individually, apart from yourselves, because you play against each other, who's been your toughest opponent, Michael? I'll start with you. Who's been your toughest opponent locally? Locally, oh, gee. Yeah. Um, oh, through the 90s, there was probably a few more characters around, to be honest. Now it's a lot of young boys, not in a bad way or anything, but there was the likes of Borghetto and um, Tony Reeves was a big boy. Yes. He was taller <laughs> than me. So um, Tony Reeves, Borghetto. Uh, just off the top of my head, Doran Carriage is pretty good up yeah, there as well. Yeah. Not tough so much, but talented, yeah. skill-wise. Yeah. What, yeah. A, what about yourself, Daniel? Yeah, I'd probably have to say Tony Reeves and even little Louis Rodriguez, I don't remember him, he was, yeah, he was yes, pretty quick. Yeah. So. Mm. And Jason Trimboli, he was always tough to mark. So. Yeah, yeah. Trimble's been there. Yeah. And what about yourself, uh, David? Just the ones that I can think of was probably playing against Adelaide Blue Eagles a few years ago when uh, Michael Brooks was there and Corey Artoni and Frank yeah. Sergi, they were probably pretty competitive, so it was very difficult to play against him. Now what's, uh, mm. I've heard a little bit of um, <laughs> news about Corey, that he's actually been uh, training, back training with you for a little bit. Yeah, he is actually, he's yeah. back in training, I think he's signed a contract, so he's going to be playing for the rest of the season. So. Well, I'll tell you what, I would love, I spoke to Michael Barnett about this, I'd <laughs> love to see him back because he's just such a quality player, and it'd be great to see him back on the pitch and, uh, um, you know, creating havoc up front there. Definitely. I mean, his, his touch and his distribution is just second to none, so he's a great player for us. So, Ooh, so watch this space because obviously we're going to have to get down and film one of your matches yeah. and uh, <laughs> see what happens there. And of course, this is the Premier League, guys, and uh, we, as I said, again, was a break from uh, most uh, matches, but there was a catch-up match, and that was uh, a round five catch-up match, if we can just see the results from that. That was Adelaide Comets were up against uh, Sassy. Very, very tight match, and in the end, it, it ended a draw, three all, uh, with uh, Mohamed Kone. Great, he's a great player, beautiful touch. Talk about <coughs> someone who's got great touch. Mohamed has, he scored two, and Ryan Mitchell scoring the other one. And of course, uh, Mullen scoring two for Sassy, and uh, um, Wooding also scoring there. So, um, another very, very tight match. Now, uh, Barney Smith wasn't uh, there for that match because, uh, as I I alluded to a couple of weeks ago, his father has had a triple bypass um, and so he has been not that well uh, at hospital. So Barney was again with his father and um, so we do wish uh, Ron Smith all the best and hope he's uh, back into recovering very, very quickly because he's a, another great character of uh, Australian football. Let's have a look at the table after round 11 and uh, this is interesting now because all teams have played 11 matches so it is starting to, the gap is starting to widen up top. We've got Cobras who've had a, a fantastic run of late uh, on 23 points, White City on 21, uh, possibly having those three championship points deducted at the end of the season which would be uh, rather disappointing. Cumberland also on 21 points, Adelaide Olympic and Croydon on 17 apiece. And then there's a little bit of a gap between Pirates and Comets on 13. Salisbury on 12 also have form, uh, found a bit of form of late, so uh, they're doing rather well for themselves. Sassy, uh, uncharacteristically towards the bottom of the table, they're on 11. And uh, Panthers on 5. So, um, you know, those two teams would want to get a few uh, wins under their belt to lift their position on the ladder as well. Now, again, we're back to normal rounds, so we're back to round 12 for the uh, Premier League. So let's have a look at the fixtures for round 12 of the Divine Homes Premier League. Again, we say this every week, it's uh, like a broken record, but there's some fantastic matches that are being played, played across all three leagues. And we've got uh, Panthers up against Cumberland now. We, you will see later on the footage, I did take the Cumberland and Seaford game, which was a catch-up uh, cup game. Cumberland doing very, very well up against Panthers at home, so it um, mm, will be interesting that match to see whether Panthers can uh, scrape out a win there or whether they will succumb to the might of Cumberland. Adelaide Olympic are at home to Pirates, it's actually both their home ground because Olympic oh, really? is playing at uh, Pirate Park this year, so uh, well that's really a, a, a dead rubber isn't it really because <laughs> they're both at home. 
Uh, that would be a great match to go and see because two very strong sides. They're both fighting for top five, Paul. Well, they so. are, definitely. Yeah. So uh, that's going to be another good match. All these matches, these three matches are being played at 3pm. Adelaide Cobras at home to Adelaide Comets. And as we did say, they have found a lot of form over the last four or five matches, Cobras. So, uh, you know, you'd be, if you're looking on uh, current form, you'd probably be tipping Adelaide Cobras there for that match. Bit of a derby, that one? Yeah, a bit of a, yeah, I guess, yeah, yeah we could say a bit of a derby there, yeah. but, uh, I mean, you never know. I mean, Comets do play well too, but again, it's always about finding the back of the net, and that's the difference in, in, in winning a match. Salisbury up against Croydon. Now, this one will be an interesting one. This is at 7 o'clock at Steve Jarvis Park. Salisbury, as we did say, has found a, a bit of form of late, um, so... That'll be an interesting one there. Uh, I did see Croydon and Comets play a couple of weeks ago and um, Croydon weren't too impressive, but they have backed it up with a couple of wins after that. So uh, we'll see, wait and see uh, for next week. Never to see what easier Salisbury. No, never, it isn't. There, they're, they're all fighters. I mean, they're yeah. a bit like Mobbery. They Mobbery never give up and just play right through to the end. And it'll be interesting to see if Salisbury uh, are able to take the points in that match. And then, of course, the last match, which is, again, a 7 o'clock match, Sassy. Um, up against White City. White City is the host because uh, Santos Stadium is not available. So um, uh, that's at Frank Mitchell Park. So again, a deadly ground, isn't it? Mm, definitely. <laughs> it is a deadly ground and uh, we see lots of uh, interesting games being played there. So that's going to be another one. So it's going to be the young boys up against the might of Adrian Santrak's uh, side with Bradley Armour going yeah, over there now. So uh, he's been doing well, played well last week. So that's a good player. Yeah, he's quality. I mean, you yeah. experience. You, no we talk doubt. about Corey Altani. There's another player, you know, Bradley Definitely. Armour. Exactly, yeah. Getting a player of the year, Serge Milton medal twice. So, uh, you know, you don't knock someone back like that. Yeah. They have got a lot of experience behind them and they know how to play. So, uh, again, another interesting match. Um, Guys, we're going to have a short break again. Okay. And when we're going to come back, we're going to be looking at the State League and also the Top Corner Sports uh, two games that were played over the weekend. So stick with us because you're watching Full On Football. Here we 